Yes, let's talk about hockey. The show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. From 1942 through a majority of the 1960s, the NHL was comprised of only six teams. But around 1965, their control over major professional hockey became legitimately threatened when U.S. TV networks were planning on denying the NHL television contracts and instead televising games from the Western Hockey League, which had just expanded into several large West Coast markets and featured strong rosters of players that had been excluded from the NHL's limited lineups. This left the NHL with only one option, expansion. So, in 1966, they announced that the league would be doubled in size from six teams to 12 for the 1967-68 season, with the six new teams forming their own division in the league. One of the new teams was a club moved from the Western Hockey League to the NHL by its new owner, the Oakland Seals. Originally the San Francisco Seals of the WHL, this club was purchased by Barry Von Gerbig after the NHL awarded him an expansion team for the San Francisco Bay Area. The original plan was to have the team play in a new arena in San Francisco, but when the new arena was never built, the team was moved across the bay to Oakland to play in the new Oakland Alameda County Coliseum Arena and renamed the California Seals. The first puck drop for the Seals was on October 11, 1967 for their home opener against one of their expansion brethren, the Philadelphia Flyers. The Seals would win this game 5-1, as well as their next game against the Minnesota North Stars 6-0. But it would be a good month before they got another tally in their win column, after going winless in 14 games. During this time period, it became apparent that Van Gerbig's plan to bring fans in from San Francisco failed. So, he changed the team's name 12 games into the season on November 6th to the Oakland Seals, so as to focus solely on drawing in crowds from the Oakland market. But the turnout from the Oakland market did not amount to much, and the Seals' on-ice performance was dismal as well, landing them dead last in their division. In the club's second year, only seven of the original 20 players from the previous season returned. However, this new roster would be an improvement for Oakland, nearly doubling their win total from their last year and finishing ranked second in their division to earn the club's first playoff berth. Against Los Angeles in the first round of the 1969 playoffs, Oakland would fall in seven games. Then, upon their return to the postseason the next year in 1970, they once again suffered a first-round knockout, though this time by the way of a four-game sweep by Pittsburgh. After this latest disappointment, Van Gerbig was finally able to sell the club, something he had been trying to do since part way into the team's first year when the low attendance numbers showed no signs of rising. The purchaser? Flamboyant owner of the MLB's Oakland Athletics, Charlie O'Finley. On October 15, 1970, with the new season already two games old, Finley announced that the team's name was being changed to the California Golden Seals, followed by a number of other marketing gimmicks intended to sell the team to fans. Among them, changing the Seals' colors to green and gold to match those of the popular Oakland Athletics Baseball Club. However, this was all for naught as the Seals finished with the worst record in the NHL that year. In an attempt to make a turnaround after a disastrous year, the Seals traded their pick in the first round of the 1971 draft to the Montreal Canadiens, along with defenseman Francois Lacombe. In return for Montreal's first round pick in the 1970 draft, as well as left winger Ernie Hickey and Cash. As a result, the Canadians had the top pick in the 1971 draft and used it to select future Hall of Famer Guy Lafleur, all thanks to what is now looked at as one of the most one-sided deals in NHL history. The result of the Golden Seals' 1971-72 season would show only the slightest of improvements, as they finished second from last instead of dead last this year. 
However, any headway that the club made was erased in the 1972-73 season when Finley's refusal to match contract offers from the new World Hockey Association caused five of the team's top ten scorers to leave for the new league. As a result, the Seals sank to dead last once again. Tired of the struggling hockey team, Finley tried to sell the Seals, but there were no takers. Eventually, the NHL took control of the team in February of 1974, purchasing it from Finley for $6.58 million. The league would run the Seals for more than a year, until San Francisco hotel magnate Melvin Swig bought the team in 1975 with the intent of moving the team to a proposed new arena in San Francisco. However, after the team finished dead last once again, plans for the new arena were cancelled, and with the new arena out of the picture, the league dropped any objections they had to relocating the franchise. So, after four consecutive years of finishing dead last in their division, the Seals were relocated to Cleveland, Ohio on July 14, 1976, and renamed the Barons after the city's old AHL team that played from 1937 to 1973. The Barons would never come close to filling their Cleveland arena, though. The team's home opener on October 7, 1976 only drew 8,900 fans, and attendance after that only drew 10,000 or more fans in 7 out of 40 home games, even worse numbers than when the team had been in Oakland. On the ice, there was no glimmer of hope either. With the Barons finishing dead last in their division in both the 1976-77 and 1977-78 seasons, after two more years of dead last finishes and with attendance worse than it had been in Oakland, the team permitted the Barons owners to merge their club with another failing team, the Minnesota North Stars, on July 15, 1978, shrinking the NHL down to 17 teams. The merged team continued as the Minnesota North Stars, but assumed the Barons' place in the Adams division. Of the NHL's expansion six, the Oakland-Cleveland club is the only one to have failed to the point of folding, and to this day, the Cleveland Barons remain the most recent team in an established North American major professional league to fold, as well as the only team in the NHL to do so since the Brooklyn Americans in 1942.